ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening. And this evening I'm going to be painting this wonderful old beat up rusty truck sitting out in the field. I love painting rusty things. All right, as always, I have pre-drawn this and I've pre-drawn this on a sheet of arches paper. Uh, 9 by 11, I believe, 140 pound. And I'm going to be using, uh, in order to paint this, my Mission Gold paints there they are in a nice tin i'm also using some maritini brushes and some dana squirrel mop brushes there they are right there let's get into it and get ready to paint okay so i'm gonna just start by doing a little bit of sky here a little bit of cerulean blue and i make a nice puddle of it and just pull it across the top Hopefully make it a little bit darker at the, at the top and a little bit lighter at the bottom. There we go. Looks like I've got a little bit of other color in there. I don't know, maybe a little Viridian, maybe a little Indigo in there just to uh, change it up very slightly. Uh, and all the way down to the horizon line, painting around the truck. There it is. A little easier on one side than it is on the other. That's okay. And I'm trying hard not to forget this time to paint in the windows. I do like to forget to do that from time to time. Uh, and then I want to try to see if I can't get a few clouds in here. This is a, just a little dry brush dragging over there to suck off some of that water. A little bit of the paint. Add a little bit of something into the sky so it's not just blue. And then I'm just barely touching in the bottom of these clouds. That's a little bit of indigo, it looks like to me, just to give a tiny bit of interest to them. Okay, now that we've got our sky done, let's talk about uh, the background here. There we go, there we go, back there. We got some trees back there. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of green. This is a little bit of, oh, hooker's green that I'm mixing up to put back there. There we go, trying to make that uh, Horizon line, not really smooth. Get some variation in there. Just dipping in and putting a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown in with it also. So you get the field that's just in front of those trees that you can see in the reference photo. There we go. And I'm not trying to tint my colors. Not trying to, that's a little Van Dyke Brown in there as well with a little bit of indigo. Maybe it's dark back there in a few places. But I'm not trying to make that blue and push it way back in the back. Uh, I'm going to allow that to be green. Those, those trees are not very far from us. Uh, just barely across that field. There we go. I guess, I guess I needed to fix my setup. Now you can see me as I paint and my paint tin and the, the reference photo. There it is. And same thing on this side. Let me get a little bit of that... Uh, brown in there. There's our field coming across. I guess maybe I'll darken that up a little bit. It's just a touch of indigo in there. I could have done blue. I could have done oh any uh, any of a lot of other different colors to make that uh, kind of a transition from the field to the tree line back there and some dark areas in those trees. There it is. All right, all right. Uh, so let's see what we got to do now. We got this big white area in the front of us. Let's see what we can do with this truck. All right, a little burnt sienna, a little raw sienna. Mixing that up. Trying to get on the color of this truck here. That's going to be the base of this truck. It's not a perfect rust color. Uh, but it's going to do a, a good job for us. I like the color that it makes. Uh, it's going to make it stand out uh, quite nicely. Uh, normally I paint rust a bit differently, uh, but I usually also have a different paint set in front of me. Uh, this will work fine on this one. You can see already it looks like a bit of rust. And uh, there's some wooden boards there sticking out on the truck bed. I don't want to paint those in. Uh, with this color, I'm going to paint those a slightly different color. And I'm going around some of the details here. And I'm going over some of the other details. Mixing in a few different colors here. 
maybe adding a little bit of permanent red in there to warm it a little bit uh, with some of the burnt umber. I've also got a, a color on here called red brown that I don't have with any other uh, set. I'm, I'm going to mix a little bit of that in. I'm just trying to get the outline, the shape of the truck uh, the way I want it. All the way down there. I'm not worried about any details at this point in time. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not worried about the front fender. I'm not worried about the back fender. I'm not worried about the door. I just want to get some color onto the truck right now. And we'll worry about putting those details on on the next go around. All right, it looks like I've picked up a bigger brush here. And uh, this is a flat brush. And I'm trying to uh, <laughs> paint in a few areas where maybe there are some weeds that are growing up here. All right, it looks a little funny at the moment. Uh, those are That's all going to be green in the front there. And we'll see exactly how those weeds grow up. Uh, but that's just the top of the weeds that we see there. All right, there's a little water line there. I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. I'm going to hope that uh, as we put another layer of paint on here, that that's just going to go over that and add some character and interest. It's a little funny to me that we got a bit of a water line with this paper. But uh, again, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to accept it as one of those weird things that happens in watercolors. And we're going to go with it. I'm not going to touch it up. I'm not going to do anything because the more you futz with it, the more you can ruin it. So we're just going to give it a second to dry up and move on from there. All right, almost dry, almost dry. Let's grab a little bit of this hooker's green. Add a little bit of uh, yellow ochre into it. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber in there. And uh, let's put on these leaves, weeds, grasses in the front. And you see I'm trying to go up into those lines that I just made. Hopefully that looks uh, like it's going to add some interest into the front of uh, that truck there. A nice, a nice bit of green here, darkening the color as we come forward a bit adding hopefully not getting it too smoothly uh, so we leave a little bit of interest on the page with our colors mixing together themselves obviously I needed to put my reading glasses on so I could see what I'm doing all right a little cerulean blue here a little indigo making something a bit dark I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint the inside of the cab on this truck with this dark mixture. All right, and this is going to be shadow on the inside there. Really dark, uh, and it's going to help define both the inside and the outside of this cab. So being very careful to do this. And again, this is my Maritini brush, or one of my Maritini brushes. Uh, the Maritini brush is a squirrel hair, a gray squirrel hair brush. Uh, it comes to a nice point, the brush does. I'm mixing in some indigo in here uh, with a little bit of brown, just changing it up a little bit, that color up just a little bit. Uh, but back to the brushes, these Maritini brushes, they do, they hold a ton of water. They come to a very nice point. I'm very happy with these brushes. They're very nice. And there you can see, quick as that, I've painted the inside of this truck. There it is. Everything that's in shadow inside that truck, now you can see it. And it really helps set the shape for uh, the outside of the truck as well. All right, so and now we get the fun part, where we get to start defining more bits and pieces of the truck here and there. So this little bit is in shadow over here. I'm going to put on some darker colors. This is a blue, and I'm going to mix that with a warmer color. And that's going to help to make a shadow on the driver's side door of this truck. Something like that. And I'm just going to work that right over that 
uh, water line that's there, that tide line. And again, I'm hoping it's not going to cause too much of an issue. And again, uh, my shadows on this one, I'm putting on some blues and then I'm going to warm part of it up with some, uh, some browns. So those browns are burnt umber and uh, burnt sienna that I'm working in there. And the blues that I'm working with primarily are cobalt blue and cerulean blue. And the kind of the, the juxtaposition of uh, warms and darks there, I hope are going to give this quite a bit of interest as we go through this painting. So the further down in the painting uh, I go, way down in the bottom, we're going to get some darker blues, some cooler colors. And as the shadows come towards the top right here, let's say I'm going to mix in some browns and then I'll probably do a little bit of blending out of that. And so we'll, we'll have some darker shadows or, or some colder shadows. We'll have some warmer shadows. Uh, and in the end, I hope we're going to end up with a really nice uh, a painting that has a lot of interest as far as colds and warms go. And, there, and we're just going to keep moving right across this truck and adding some colors. Uh, and some shadows as we go wherever there needs to be a dark here or there we'll put it on uh, once again see I started on the right hand side I should have started on the left hand side it's just so much more comfortable to start on the right hand side but then I end up having to paint over wet paint with my hand I always remind myself I'm not going to do that, and I still always end up doing it. All right, I'm just outlining at this point the shape of the truck, or some of the shape of this truck. And I'm just continuing to go around. I'm continuing to pick out pieces on this truck and add some color to them. Add some... Add some warm tones, add some cold to, cold tones to try and uh, add a little bit of interest here and there, here and there. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm working with uh, the warm of the brown and the cold of the blue, and it looks nothing like, at this point, the reference photo, and that's fine. The reference photo is just that. It's just a reference for us. Um, uh, but I like, I like the juxtaposition of the warms and the colds that are there. All right, I'm going to drop in some of the wood here. This is a, some yellow ochre in there. I believe I've got some burnt umber in there to make this wood on the back of this truck. And just like we did with the front, I'm just going to add all of the color here. I'm going to put a little bit of green in there. Maybe there's a little bit of green reflected from the grasses in front of this. I'm going to put on just a block color into here and then I'll go back and I'll start adding the details in a little bit. Uh, we don't need to we don't need to paint the details to start with. Let's just get them on there, get the color on there and then play with it. All right, some some indigo and some blue here. Really, we're going to start to set this off uh, from the sky and then we'll probably mix in a few warmer colors in there but because the sky is so bright in the background I want to put a dark on here so to really make the front of this truck stand out and I think it does and just continuing to paint the grill there's a little uh, bit of metal there holding those two lights up it looks like so we're just going to paint right around that yeah, that was great. I just showed you where it was right there. And that little sliver of, of light there, that little sliver that I didn't paint, that's pretty important. That's going to show the difference between the, the grill here and the fender that's behind it. I'm, I'm going to leave that there. Um, just... <laughs> Not sure what I'm painting around right there. There must have been a little bit of something on the on the reference photo I saw. <clears throat> and this is the time where I've got to let the front dry so I can start to add a few details. 
We're, uh, we're almost halfway through this at this point in time. So a few details here and there can really help with what we're doing. There we go. Uh, sets off the top, the roof line of this truck. And here's the footrest. Kind of sticks out there. There it goes. It's mostly in the grass. We're not going to worry too much about that. Uh, and then I'm going to come back in the front. Yeah, it's dry enough. Right, I've got these uh, springs or something that are up here that we need to paint in. Uh, I'm going to make mine a bit darker maybe than they are in the reference photo. There's one. Just paint around it. Something like that. And we've got one on this side. We probably ought to have one on that side. There it is. Maybe that one's bent a little bit more. It doesn't look exactly the same. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. Yeah, we got some dark. Just pull that dark down into those weeds that are there. And you can kind of see the method for my madness with those weeds at this point. They, they do look like they're standing up and going into uh, or over top of the truck. They're not perfect, but uh, you can see what I'm going with there. Adding a little more detail onto the door. Trying to give it some texture and life. There's a, there's a little line that goes over there. A little dent in the, in the side of the door maybe. Again, these are just simple browns. I'm not even, I'm not really even mixing these. I, I'm thinning out the paint a little bit on my palette, uh, but a lot of this is just burnt umber or this red brown that comes out. Maybe a little burnt sienna in there again. All right, that's a lot of detail on that door. I don't know that we need that much. Come on, Michael, let's move on to something else. <laughs> the roof line, I guess. There we go. Uh, I guess I think that's got some kind of shadow right up on the top, or I just want to strengthen that value uh, to make it stand out that much more uh, from the skyline behind it. I guess that helps. That looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. I love the way this one turns out, so I can't say I did anything wrong. Okay, and we've got a little bit of detail on the door. Let's put a little bit of detail on the front. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the front of this truck. Maybe match up some of those, the lines there. And uh, not put anything right on that edge. I want, I want it to look like there's an edge to this door, like there's some, sh or the, the, the cab of the truck. Make it look like there's some shape to it. Hopefully we get that in there. Just continuing to work and add darks here and there. Anything I think is going to help to bring out the shape of this and the, the texture of this, the, the, the contour of it. Whatever's going to make it stand out. I need to do a little bit with it. There we go. And these are rounded, so they should have a little bit of darker area just underneath them. That's a little bit dark underneath there. There it is. Okay. Uh, and as I'm doing this, I probably have some some slats on the grill that I need to work with. This is looks like a little bit of indigo and a little bit of that red brown that I was talking about. Oh, no, working my way back into the wood on the truck bed back there. <clears throat> Just trying to bring that to life a little bit. There it is. It's pretty dark. It's pretty dark. I should have maybe have left a little bit more highlight on uh, some of these, but there it is. That ochre color will shine through a little bit when it dries. There's some of the wood on the back of that, and just a couple of slat lines back there. It looks like some wood on the back of that truck bed and a little shadow underneath. <clears throat> Here's a dark spot. That step is really dark. If we can make that look like a step, that would be great. It's a little dark underneath there. All right, and now it's time to tackle a little bit of our lights here, a warm yellow. 
Uh, for me, it's permanent yellow deep on this set. I don't know, they don't have great colors on here. Uh, but a little bit of this warm yellow, just to indicate that these are lights on here. I'm going to drop a little bit of blue in the top of those. Just to show. There you go. Maybe some shadow up underneath there. I think that looks great. Darken that up. It's pretty deep and dark underneath there. There you go. <clears throat> and blend that out just ever so slightly. Now it looks like they're coved out. Still got a li little bit to go here, a little bit to go. All right, I've got, um, I've got that same dark color I've been working on here. Uh, there's a piece of metal sticking up here. I'm going to paint part of it and just give a little line underneath the bar that connects. There it is, these two headlights. We've got something there. Maybe I didn't get it quite as crisp as I had hoped. Let's try it again. And, and again. <laughs> Strengthening a few of the darks in here. However I want them. All right, this is a little burnt umber that I just mixed up. And um, just, all right, I'm going to put that on and then blend that out, I'm sure. There it is. Just, that's just going to make that pop from that background a little bit more. Uh, not too much to worry about. I love the way the lights are looking on here. Uh, I'm going to put a little texture on the wood. Like I said, there's not much more to go. Only a couple of minutes with this one. I know that I've got to do... Uh, okay, I'm going to strengthen my darks here behind the cab on that wood. Just really strengthen that. That's in deep, deep shadow back there. There it is. <clears throat> Some shadow on those beams. And I know we've got a bit left to go. I've got a radiator I've got to work on. I've got some grass in the front I need to work on. And a little bit more here and there. Aha, here comes the radiator. Just dropping some lines in there. There it is. And without doing too much to it, it does now look like uh, it's a radiator and um, there are some there's some vents in there and I might add a little bit more there we go right across the top there's the cap on the top of the radiator we can fill it with that all right checking to see how how dry we are here oh uh, toning down the white around the headlamps uh, it's a little a little bit of peacock blue actually I think maybe that, maybe that chrome has stayed okay for a number of years watching this in in uh, hindsight I'm not sure I needed that but uh, again I do like the way this turned out so I can't say uh, that I did anything wrong uh, and I'm putting in just a little bit more interest here that watermark that we started with hung on a little bit stronger than I think it needed to so I'm kind of putting a little bit on here hopefully to draw away from that just a little bit and uh, and yes I'm stalling before I have to do the grass in the front I know I've got to do that I know it's coming up and uh, I'm not sure how to how to do grasses I mean I'm sure how to do grasses I'm not always confident in how to how I do my grasses uh, so just playing around with little details here and there, trying to get this uh, to look exactly the way I like. All right, maybe there's a little shadow coming off of uh, these big uh, timbers, 
<laughs> boards anyways holding up the side of the the truck bed uh, and that leaves us with a really only one thing left to do unless I find more for myself uh, but that last thing that we have to do here are the grasses the last major thing we have to do are the grasses here and I think I'm gonna grab a bigger brush that old flat brush that I used before let's grab that and see what we can do with that I'm going to strengthen some of the grasses up there and bring that all the way down. These grasses, some of them are growing up in front, some of them uh, aren't. But we got to put a lot of those in there. On that flat brush, if you turn it on edge, it's just a nice way to make some uh, make some straight lines on there. You just tap it here and tap it there, and it does a wonderful job. And I'm trying to vary the color of green by mixing um, my, my hooker's green, maybe a little sap green, and some of that burnt umber to make some different colors of green. Now a quill brush, and I'm going to drag and pull some of these colors out. And I'm just going to mess up these colors a little bit here and there. There we go. I don't want to do too much to it. A little lighter in some places, a little darker in some places. And not much to it. If you like this painting and you like my style, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I do this kind of stuff all the time. I love painting. I love hearing feedback. If you guys have any comments on this, please leave a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments that people leave to me. If you, if you want to follow me on social media, I've got links down below to Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I think that's it, Instagram and Twitter. There's a link down below to my website uh, where I do post some additional content and uh, talk about things I have going on from time to time. Uh, there's a link to a Discord channel down below where I will often post uh, what I'm working on or what I'm going to be painting, especially when I do a live painting. I'll, paint, I'll post uh, the reference photo beforehand, so if anybody wants to paint along with me, They'll have that picture already. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Etsy store. If you'd like to purchase a painting of mine, I've got several up there at any given point in time. And the last thing that we have is a donation link. The, the studio um, isn't free to run. It often takes... A bit of money to keep bringing you content like this. If you would like to donate, please find that link down below. Would appreciate that very much. There's what it looks like if it would be framed. I don't know. It looks fantastic. A beautiful old truck sitting out in a field. I want to thank you all for joining me here for this video. And I hope you'll join me in my next one. Until then, thank you so much and take care. Bye-bye.